participate in the Spirit of Amen. I Amen. So I, I can't pass up the opportunity uh, to speak a little about uh, the gospel for today, uh, our Lord, uh, uh, the, 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 um, losing our Lord in the temple, right? Finding our Lord in the temple. Um, uh, it's subject to a lot of misunderstanding about what was going on with the event narrated today. So uh, clear some of that up. Uh, okay, so misinterpretation. We don't want to become Arians, right? That heresy was like 1,800 years ago. We've been through that already. So Christ, the person of Christ, is uh, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. There are not two people when we talk about God and Christ. Christ uh, was the second person of the Blessed Trinity. So here's the second person of the Blessed Trinity, right? And he can, he can think with a divine intellect or he can think with a human intellect. Uh, so there's nothing that Christ as man, how can I say this? Um, there's nothing that God knew that Christ as man didn't also know, right? So Christ, the Christ child, knew everything that God knew. Fact. Uh, so there was no, absolute no possible way that the Christ child, 13 years old, didn't know he was God, didn't know he was the Messiah, didn't know what his mission was, didn't know anything in the universe. The Christ child knew absolutely everything because the Christ child was God. That's who was receiving, like, you've got um, emotions and feelings as, as Christ. Who was receiving those emotions and feelings? What, you know, who was looking out with those eyes at the world? It was God, right? That's the person who was seeing and experiencing everything. So, um, let's get that down first. So that Christ was not disobedient or experiencing a growing awareness that he was the Messiah. That, that, that it couldn't exist. It was not possible. Uh, and so you hear that sometimes, like, you know, Christ didn't know who he was or he stayed behind in the temple because he was getting this sense that this is where I belong and, oh, what's going on? Baloney, right? None of that. Uh, so this, is, this was, uh, so we have to get that down first. Secondly, other misinterpretations, uh, the Holy Family was without original sin. St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary were not impatient or upset. Well, they'd be upset. They were not impatient or angry or um, losing their patience or whatever it may be. Because losing one's patience, being irritated, those are effects of original sin. And they were free from that, right? Free from those, 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 those effects of sin. Uh, now, what would happen? They may have felt the movements of it. They may have felt irritated or felt this or that, but they never would have given into it. It would have been like, no, absolutely not. Uh, so never, never any of that from the bless, uh, Saint, um, Saint Joseph at the Blessed Virgin. So, we, uh, you know, and then there's different ways of interpreting this. But what happened is, according to, you know, some we could say, it was the Jewish custom for children to remain behind uh, and receive extra or different instruction. And then the parents would leave first, and then the children would follow, and then find their parents in the various, you know, camps and so on. That's why Our Lady and St. Joseph left, and it was a day's journey, expecting Christ to return with all the other children. And then he didn't return. And so that's why then they went back and began looking for him. It's because, okay, where, where, where is he? Why, why didn't he return with everybody else? So it wasn't like, you know, they, they left behind, you know, the most important piece of baggage in Jerusalem. It wasn't like a mistake on their part. They were, they were supposed to leave him behind. But he was supposed to come later. Um, now, people think, well, Christ was disobedient. No, he wasn't disobedient. Uh, he just did something his parents weren't expecting. They didn't tell him, you have to come. Make sure you come, and if you don't, you're going to get in trouble. That didn't exist. They simply had an expectation, and he did something different. And that's what was being referred to when Christ said, did you not know I must be about my father's business? They knew he didn't mean St. Joseph. They knew he meant God Almighty. They both knew that. And what they were asking, what the, uh, the Blessed Virgin asks, why have you done this? Why have you done this without our knowledge? Why didn't you tell us? Why did you stay behind and, 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 and uh, cause us this anxiety? They didn't question uh, that it was necessary. Right? They, they knew that Christ was the Messiah. The Blessed Virgin knew that very well. Uh, so there, was, there wasn't a question of how, um, um, like, you shouldn't have done this, but we, that's fine. You did this. We just don't understand why. That's what the question was about. So there, there, there's some, uh, I guess we just say, some groundwork. Now, what can we learn from that, right? 
Um, number one, <clears throat> uh, Christ was teaching his parents and parents of all time that if God calls you to do something for him, you can do it without your parents' knowledge or without their consent, right? So this is kind of a lesson that was very important for the Middle Ages when parents would want to say, you're going to be this, you're going to be that, and no daughter of mine is going to go to the convent, or my son's not going to be a priest or a monk. Or, you have, here, here, this is strange. You're going to be a bishop. You can't be a Cistercian, right? This is your, you were a noble family. You have to follow this. this uh, you, 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 can't, you can't go become a, a, a friar. That's beneath your station. So Christ, even the Christ child, quote, disobeyed his parents, or rather left his parents without their knowledge and followed the call of God. So that's, that's kind of the essential important point here, right? So children can, can, can do that, follow vocation against the parents' wishes. The other important point is that even Joseph and Mary were confused by the mysterious will of God. Even they didn't know what God was doing. And, and, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, she didn't even have original sin. Her intellect wasn't darkened by sin. She had the most prodigious intellect the world has ever known. And even she couldn't understand why God would have done this. So we're in good company. When we don't understand why God has done something, okay, even the Blessed Virgin Mary wouldn't, didn't understand some things. So we're in good company. And furthermore, how many times have we thought, oh, I can't be like the blessed, I'm supposed to be like the blessed virgin, but she was without sin. How am I supposed to imitate the blessed virgin? How am I supposed to imitate St. Joseph? I can't be like them. Yes, we can, because guess what they did? They accepted God's will when they didn't understand. And they did that, and we can do that too. And so now we are like the blessed virgin or St. Joseph. So that uh, should be a great consolation to us. And furthermore, uh, who are we to question God? After God asks Mary and Joseph to be obedient to him, which he did, uh, the Christ child left and said, I'm going to stay behind and I'm not going to do it without your knowledge. And I'm asking you to be OK with that. Right. God was asking that of blessed uh, 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 the blessed Mary and St. Joseph. And they did that. Uh, St. Joseph and the blessed virgin were obedient to God. And then God was obedient to them. He doesn't ask anything of us he's not willing to do himself. He was obedient to his parents. After asking them to be obedient to him, he was obedient to them. It goes both ways. Uh, and, and to give some idea of the magnitude, St. Bernard of Clairvaux has got a great quote on that. Uh, God is subject to man. God, I repeat, to whom the angels are subject, whom the principalities and powers obey, was subject to Mary. And not only to Mary, but also to Joseph. Learn, O oh man, to obey. Learn, O oh dust, to submit. Shame on you, proud mankind, who are but dust and ashes. God abases himself, and do you, O oh creature, exalt thyself? It's the poetry. That's the, uh, the prose of the 12th century. Oh, oh the good old days. <clears throat> um, but, you know, when? When do, we, when do we exalt ourselves over God? Right? Anytime we are bratty in prayer, when basically when prayer, we're asking God to be obedient to us. I want you, God, to give me what I want. Here's what I'm praying for. This is my petition. Now give it to me. And we're asking God to obey me. I want you to do this. And, and guess what? When God doesn't do it, we get mad. You didn't obey me. You didn't give me what I asked for. Who do you think you are? We shouldn't let that be our attitude. And now maybe explicitly, we're not thinking that, but when we think about it, you know, am I irritated? Am I, am I um, was it um, losing faith or having that like, oh, woe is me, God's not listening to my prayers, where is God? If God existed, why wouldn't he do this? <clears throat> that kind of thing. Don't let yourself fall into that. That's, that's, that's what we're getting into. We're getting into that idea that God should obey me. Very dangerous that attitude indeed. <clears throat> So, uh, what should we do? We should simply be like St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin, as I said earlier. Yes, we can pray. Yes, we can ask God for, 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 for favors and things and so on and, and blessings and virtues. But when he doesn't give it, subject ourselves to him. You know, God was subject to man. After that example, what can I do except pure submission to God? I have, I have nothing, there's nothing I can do. There's, there's, there's no, uh, um, what is it? Uh, I don't have a single gripe or complaint against God. I simply have to accept. And, and God is going to look out for me. 
right? Absolutely everything uh, we can place in God, and, and even if everything falls apart in this life, he will reward us a hundred and a thousand fold in the next. We just have to be patient and wait and see it. Uh, so we can imitate the Blessed Virgin, we can imitate St. Joseph, and we can imitate Christ, who himself was subject to others. And that's something all of us can do. When, when, when uh, uh, life, when, when reality, when chance, when misfortune, when all that happens, subject ourselves to it under God's almighty power, and we'll be assured uh, we, we can become saints. That is the quickest, fastest way to become saints. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.